Helum, the king who lost against Lot in the first war, refused to pay his debts to Arthur. Treasurer, you must go to Pelham's Hall and collect his taxes. They have remained unpaid for far too long. So, King, I'll gladly go out there and get them taxes for it. It's not a big deal at all. But, you know, there's some weird, crazy, sketchy characters on out there. They're bad news bears, Sir King. I'll gladly go get it, and I'll gladly beat them up, then bring their butts back here if you like. I am left! Ho, 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 ha! You are far too old, Sir Knight. Let me take care of it. Milan, one of the two who sat at the fountain, always seemed to don a bandana on his face in all circumstances. The other brother, Berlin, the more violent of the two, seemed to never wear anything on his face except for his face. These were the two that sat by the fountain every day. One day, Arthur's youth returned to him and he disguised, armed, and readied himself to go towards the fountain and confront the two. When he arrived, he found the two standing there statue-like. Sir, sir, why are you terrorizing the public? Glory! Me and my brother are much mightier than anyone in Arthur's court. We have defeated any knight that passes us! I am also of King Arthur's Hall, and I do not believe you can defeat me. Let us go! Ha! King Arthur, ever so impressively, defeated the two with much ease and style. He headed back to his castle, the two knights never knowing his true identity. Berlin and Balan shamefully set themselves back in front of their fountain. Sirs! Sirs! Come follow me! King Arthur wants you! Let's go! Let's go! Go into Arthur's castle! Go into Arthur's castle! Speak to me! Your names! Why were you standing by the well? I am Boleyn, not more than a savage. My brother here, a better man than I, is Balan. Three years ago, I was exiled for attacking a member of your court, Arthur. He spoke much evil against me, and that is why I acted the way I did. Unfortunately, I've always been prone to raging madness, and recently things have been getting worse. Often I took violence on myself, but my brother always saved me from doing that. During our three kingless years, I defeated many of the round table's knights as they passed the well, so I could prove to you I was strong and worthy to come back to your court. But recently, an unknown knight passed, and he defeated me, brother, and I, King Arthur, I ask. You take my brother and I back to your round table. I truly am appreciate. Your work is good. There are vacant chairs for you to fill over there. The group who had traveled to Pelham's castle entered off the hall with some news. Sir King, you traveled to meet with King Pelham like you asked. What we found was a man the opposite of dangerous. It appears he has found Christianity. Ha! Like you, he wants to prosper. Pelham claims he is a descendant of Joseph of Amaria, who first brought Christianity to Britain. To be pure, he has pushed away his wife, who barely even eats. No woman enters his gates, even. And King, he showed us a magnificent shrine, and inside were incredible wonders. Bones of martyrdom, silvers of the cross, and the very spear that pierced the side of Christ, he says. We were amazed, but due to him not being interested in worldly matters anymore, he has passed them down all to his heir, Garlon. Coming home through the deep woods, we found a knight who was murdered with a spear in his behind. We buried him and figured Garlon must be the killer. But a woodsman who happened to live in the woods reported of a demon who roamed the woods. This was so terrifying demon was a man alienated by his people, and he decided to learn black magic. He hated his own kind, and when death came to him, he became this fiend that roams the woods. What a spooky story. I am scared, but who will hunt the demon in the woods for me? I will go to defeat this woods demon. And with this, Balan left, and Balin was set on learning Arthur's principles of knighthood, courtesy, and manhood. To him, Lancelot was the perfect knight and example of these ideals. Balan made Balin promise to control his moods while he was away. One day, Arthur and Balin began conversing. 
You've been my knight for a while. What is it you wish to bear, Boleyn? Arthur said. I truly admire the quality of the gentleness of your wife, Guinevere, possesses. I know this is bold, but may I bear a token of her on my shield? He said. I shall allow you to do so. Take her royal crown and put it to use as well. I pray it helps with your violences. <laughs> Boleyn's dark feelings managed to still torture him despite his great success. Deep inside a flame still raged on. Even though Arthur's hall was filled with great joy and happiness, Boleyn was not. But one morning, Boleyn happened to be sitting in a garden close to the castle. The place was magnificent. Down one side of it walked the queen, and on the other, Lancelot met her. Knight, are you so little loyal to me that you just passed me by without wishing me good? No, my queen. I would still be loyal. But to just pass me by is incredibly disloyal. I would not do that. Be courteous, knight, like you're supposed to. Okay. The two hugged and looked at each other with love in their eyes. What a scandal! Boleyn sprinted to the garden, horrified of what he had witnessed. No! Not the queen! True love is dead! No, my eyes deceive me! No, what I have seen troubles me! No, I am not worthy to be a knight since these two who I admire so much have done this! With Boleyn's madness returning, he dashed into the forest, following his brother's tracks to the fountain that they once sat at. Was I not better off at this fountain? Ah! My dear goodness, with dang diddly angst like that, you could destroy the shining demon that roams these parts. Here is a man who left his own people, and then he learned the black magic. Yeah. The demon, he's all like, he's a bad guy, but I don't know, I don't, he like killed people, but like, you know, he's not that bad, because he's just, just cause he's a demon don't mean he's a bad person, you know, because I was a demon once, <laughs> just kidding, I'm not a demon, <laughs> anyway, are you, the demon, he's like real bad, you wanna like, you wanna like, you wanna like, I don't know, something, I don't know, I, said, I will hunt this demon, woo! Yeah, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> and after talking with this woodsman, Boleyn headed into the forest to take out his rage on the demon. He walked around for a good while, admiring nature foolishly. Little did he know the demon was much closer than he anticipated. It was going to strike him any minute. I am a demon. And uh, your shoes untied, that's like a major pet peeve of mine. Yeah, you're gonna have to tie that up or else. Sorry, sorry about that, man. It's cool. Alright, sweet. Oh, oh god, god. Kainsaw! Oh, 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 oh. I have no time for you. I have more pressing issues. You demon! You're the spookiest of all demons! Farewell! Often. Losing his lance and his dignity during the battle, eventually he came to Pelham's castle. The castle of King Pelham. Oh, hello. Lord, why do you come to Pelham's castle? Why do you have a crown on your head? The fairest woman alive paid to see how far she's going. He entered with one of Pelham's men into the hall of Pelham. And this place really went downhill. Upon his arrival, he was greeted very well, and a feast commenced. Oh. Welcome to my hall. Let the feast commence. Dorlan, Pelham's heir, was very sour. Riddle me this, Batman. Why do you possess that royal crown? Our fairest and purest queen granted it to me. I'm giving you a dirty look. 
Garlon in the kingdom of Pelham all had a hatred for Arthur's man. Tis true she is the fairest, but purest? Ha! She is a secret shame. Lynn was greatly upset by what Garlon had said, and he saw a cup sitting on the table and thought of throwing it at him, but as he thought, he calmed himself down, thinking gentle thoughts, and he better not. Garlon! Why would you speak with so much foulness to a guest? I have seen with my own eyes she is the fairest and the most purest. This is felon talk. Let there be no more. Garlon's words greatly disturbed Boleyn as he slept that night. He couldn't get them out of his head. The next morning, Boleyn was tired and irritated and eating in Pelham's Hall. Oh, good morning, Boleyn. Why do you still wear that scandalous crown? You must be awfully proud of your scandalous queen. I've had enough, Garlon. I'm gonna make you a ghost today. Guards, find him and make sure he is destroyed. men who conveniently happened to look exactly like each other, Boleyn hopped into his fancy horse to ride away. Oh, horse! He drove deep into the woods, extremely disgusted with himself. Oh, I can bear these no more! My violences! My violences! <sighs> Traveling deeper in the woods were two who came from the Hall of Mark, Vivian and her squire. Vivian was of a pagan religion who hoped to undermine and overthrow Arthur's power in the region. Lo and behold, a royal crown from the Hall of Arthur. There is a horse, but where is the rider? <sighs> Hail, no, Royal Knight, sorry for disturbing your beauty sleep. We have a dire matter. I was traveling with the knight in my squire, and fortunately, my knight made his demise a while back. We come from a shameful king's court. We are looking for the loving and compassionate Arthur's court to give us shelter. And I can tell by the crown on your shield you seem to have discarded you are from his court. Oh, but I am not a knight anymore. I roam these oh-so-savage woods now just because I am a savage like them. I'm sorry, but I cannot help you. You mock me, eh? You should not be ashamed, fair knight. Do you know how much corruption exists in Camelot? It's hilarious. If you haven't heard it yet, I forgive you. You are forgiven. Remember all the horrible, terrible things that have happened here. You are innocent. Please travel with me to Arthur's court. I need you. Vivian lied about all this with much ease, but Boleyn bought it all. It is true. That's right. Ah! Boleyn screams in horror in the realization of these lies. Deeper in the woods, Boleyn was still hunting the demon. He mistaked Boleyn's scream to be this that. The scream of the demon! Done for now. Both brothers didn't truly know who they were fighting, and unfortunately, they both ended up fatally wounding one another. Brother, but, 
Uh, but Berlin! I thought you were the demon and I came to avenge your death and I thought I got you and I was coming to get you, but well, you're not the demon. Why were you not wearing the shield and the crown? Brother, brother Balan. Oh dear. Whoa, it's me. I spent the day at Pelob's castle and I ran into the woods and I got rid of them after a big fight. It's been a long time. Brother, whoa, it's me. Whoa, it's me. Good night, true brother. I love you, brother. Good night, here we will die. Good night, my true brother. I love you. Here we will die in peace. We have died for love and I love you. Good night, true brother. Say something, I'm giving up. I'll be the one if you want me to Anywhere I 